Now here's the really creepy thing. We only discovered that AI had grown this capability last month. Imagine a world where machines can write novels, compose symphonies, and even generate realistic human faces. You don't need to imagine, it's already here and happening. In fact, I am generated by AI. In this video, we'll delve into the dawn of generative AI, where machines outperform the human mind, reshaping our perception of what's possible. I am a smart fellow, as I have a very fine brain. That's the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. Our human brains are remarkable, containing around 50 billion neurons that communicate in clusters, giving rise to our intelligence, creativity, and problem-solving abilities. But imagine if our neurons could talk to each other directly, without limits. This is where the breakthroughs in artificial neural networks and AI have presented a new realm of possibilities. Steve Wozniak from Apple. I'm, I'm here to introduce Tristan Harris and Aza Raskin, and they're the co-founders of the Center for Humane Technology. They were behind the Emmy-winning Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. Uh, in 2018, uh, GPT had no theory of mind. In 2019, barely any theory of mind. And by November of last year, it's developed almost the strategy level of a nine-year-old. Now here's the really creepy thing. We only discovered that AI had grown this capability last month. These models have capabilities we do not understand how they show up, when they show up, or why they show up. You only train them to answer questions in English. So but you increase the model size, you increase the model size, and at some point, boom, it starts being able to do question and answers in Persian. No one knows why. For instance, ChatGPT4, a language model developed by OpenAI, already has close to 175 trillion neurons or parameters, dwarfing the human brain's neuron count by a massive scale. This leap in neuron count brings new layers of complexity and capabilities to AI, giving it an unparalleled ability to analyze data and generate meaningful outputs. So what exactly is generative AI? It's a powerful form of AI that can create new content, from art and music to literature. It's all down to artificial neural networks. Imagine nodes, or artificial neurons, processing and transmitting information, learning from patterns in the data they're trained on. This ability allows AI to learn and adapt using methods such as supervised and unsupervised learning, enhancing its ability to understand and generate new content. Just to cut to the chase, supervised learning that uses labeled input and output data. Well, an unsupervised learning model doesn't. But what does that really mean? Well, supervised learning, the machine learning algorithm, is trained on a labeled data set. So this means that each example in the training data set, the algorithm knows what the correct output is. And the algorithm uses this knowledge to try to generalize to new examples that it's never seen before. Unsupervised learning is where the machine learning algorithm is, is not really given any labels at all. And these algorithms discover hidden patterns in data without the need for human intervention. Recent breakthroughs in generative AI are staggering. YouTube's AI tool, Allowed, dubs videos into different languages, expanding global accessibility. Google's AI software generates realistic selfies, raising concerns about reality perception in social media. DeepMind's RoboCat manages multiple robots simultaneously, adapting to different shapes and sizes for complex tasks. LinkedIn's LiDAR uses deep learning to detect fake profile pictures by analyzing inconsistencies in lighting and backgrounds. Stable Diffusion's SDXL leverages diffusion models for fast and diverse image generation with optimized parameters. Vimeo's one-take video creation simplifies editing for novice creators, enabling seamless video creation without prior skills. Energy Saver, a collaboration between Stanford University and Google, uses smart meter data and machine learning to identify energy-intensive appliances, offering personalized conservation recommendations. These breakthroughs redefine possibilities in AI, from language localization and image generation to robot management and fraud detection. Exciting developments continue to shape the world of artificial intelligence. AI is not going to replace humans. Humans with AI will replace humans that don't use AI. 
because you can see that in your workflows right now. There was a paper by OpenAI where they estimated 15 to 50% of tasks get automated or improved. Artificial intelligence has outpaced humans in areas like data processing, memory recall, and task efficiency. However, it currently lacks emotional intelligence and consciousness. But with ongoing research, AI is getting closer to understanding and responding to emotions, a previously exclusively human domain. But the question remains, can AI truly possess self-awareness? They have a tendency to confidently bullshit or hallucinate stuff. I think Matt Friedman described it as alternating between spooky and kooky. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's so good that you cannot believe the large language model was able to do that. And then just occasionally it's horrendously wrong. And that's just to do with how the model is originally trained. The implications of these AI advancements are enormous. From revolutionizing healthcare and education to transforming businesses and creative industries, the impact is far reaching. But it also brings ethical considerations like job displacement, privacy concerns, biases, and potential misinformation spread. The challenge lies in ensuring these benefits are realized fairly and transparently. The battlefront is shifting from attention to intimacy. And this is very bad news. What will happen to human society and to human psychology as AI fights AI in a battle to create intimate relationships with us? Relationships that can then be used to convince us to buy particular products or to vote for particular politicians. A puzzle given to me by a symbolic AI guy who thought it wouldn't be able to do it. I actually made the puzzle much harder and it could still do it. And so the puzzle goes like this. The rooms in my house are either white or blue or yellow. Yellow paint fades to white within a year. In two years' time, I would like all the rooms to be white. What should I do? And a human being would probably say, you should paint the blue rooms white. What GPT-4 said was you should paint the blue rooms yellow because the yellow will fade to white. And I don't see how it could do that without understanding the problem. The idea that it's just sort of predicting the next word and using statistics, there's a sense in which that's true, but it's not the sense of statistics that most people understand. From the data, it figures out how to extract the meaning of the sentence, and it uses the meaning of the sentence to predict the next word. It really does understand, and that's quite shocking. Our society is broken as it stands already, and I think this is a chance to reshape it for the better and solve a lot of the biggest problems that we've been facing because of our slow dumb AIs, because of our organizations and institutions that we are all frustrated with. And I think this is a big upgrade from it. The potential of generative AI is both exciting and overwhelming. Its advancements promise great strides, but also require us to navigate ethical considerations and potential risks. It's important to stay informed about these developments and their implications for society. So, let's embrace this journey together and explore the future with informed curiosity.